In the latest study on dietary patterns and breast cancer risk among women, those eating healthier had only a quarter of the odds of breast cancer, whereas less healthy eating was associated with up to nearly eight times the odds of breast cancer. Included in the unhealthy pattern were deep-fried foods, which have previously been linked to breast cancer, as well as pancreatic cancer, lung cancer, oral and throat cancers, esophageal cancer, and cancer of the voice box. No deep-fried foods? What's a southern bell to do? Well, instead of deep-frying, how about the traditional southern diet, characterized by high intakes of cooked greens, beans, legumes, cabbage, sweet potatoes, and cornbread, which may reduce the risk of invasive breast cancer significantly? What about the consumption of deep-fried foods in risk of prostate cancer? We didn't know until now. They found that eating french fries, fried chicken, fried fish, and donuts was associated with about a third greater odds of prostate cancer, and after stratifying for tumor aggressiveness, found even slightly stronger association with more aggressive disease, suggesting that regular intake of deep-fried foods may contribute to progression of prostate cancer as well. What's in fried foods that's so bad for us? Just heating oils that hot can generate potentially carcinogenic compounds, and then known carcinogens such as heterocyclic amines and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons form when the muscles of chickens and fish are cooked at that temperature. And deep-fried plants can form different chemicals like acrylamide. I did a video about acrylamide back in 2008, suggesting it's a probable human carcinogen. Since then, a study suggested pregnant women may want to cut back on french fries to protect the growth of their baby's body and brain. And based on a study feeding people a little bag of potato chips every day for a month, it now seems acrylamide may cause inflammation as well, which may explain its purported role in cancer progression. Acrylamide intake has been associated in some studies with endometrial cancer, and ovarian cancer, lung cancer, tied also to kidney cancer and esophageal cancer. But how much cancer risk are we talking about? We didn't know until now. An excess lifetime cancer risk assessment for french fries. They picked on french fries because they comprise the, by far the greatest percentage contribution of acrylamide to the diets of children. They estimated that at most uh, one or two boys and girls out of every 10,000 would develop cancer eating french fries that they would otherwise not have gotten if they hadn't eaten french fries. So it's not as bad as eating something like uh, fried fish or fried chicken, but how much is that saying, particularly for female hormonal cancers such as breast cancer? Now, the level of cancer risk associated with french fries in both boys and girls depends on how long and how hot they are fried at. In Europe, the food industry swore that they'd self-regulate and control fried times to decrease acrylamide levels, but they apparently didn't. No subsequent change in acrylamide levels in french fries. Researchers continue to urge that the cooking temperatures should be as low as possible and the cooking time should be as short as possible, while still maintaining a tasty quality. Wouldn't want to reduce cancer risk too much, it might not taste as good. Blanching the potatoes first reduces acrylamide formation, but potato chip companies complain that not only will it muck with the flavor, but reduce the nutritional properties by leaching away some of the vitamin C. But if we're relying on potato chips to get our vitamin C, acrylamide is probably the least of our worries.